Hi folks, the Filipina Bee here. And today we're going to be talking about the controversial safe spaces law in the Philippines. I don't like intrusive legislation like this, but I don't believe this particular law is going to have a huge effect on foreigner Filipina relations. For some reason though, it seems to have confused and scared some of you guys, and I've even heard hysterical comments about it being the end of dating in the Philippines, and how foreigners will be thrown in jail for saying hello to a Filipina. But the people who say that just don't understand the culture here. So to clear away the rumor and misinformation, I've enlisted the help of my personal attorney and good friend Gracie to explain it. So let's see what she has to say. Hi, Gracie. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me back here again. Well, my pleasure, um, Gracie. So anyway, today we're going to be talking about this controversial law that has been passed way back 2019, the uh, Safe Spaces Law, also known as the RA11313. Is that correct? Yes, it is Republic Act 11313, which is the act defining gender-based sexual harassment in streets, public spaces, online workplace, workplaces, educational and training or training institutions. Okay, well, the thing that I don't understand is that some of my viewers are freaking out. So please enlighten us. What is it about? What is this law? Okay, this law simply enumerates what are the possible gender-based um, sexual harassment that either gender can commit against the other gender. So under this law, there's no specific uh, mention as who is going to be the perpetrator or who is going to be the victim. So it can be either gender. So the women can be a victim and a perpetrator at the same time, as well as the men can be a victim and perpetrator also of the act enumerated under this law. Okay, so this law is not really that new because it's been... Um, it's been implemented since 2019. So what was the law intended to do? Well, I believe that we also have a sexual harassment act before, but that law with respect to sexual harassment was only limited to women being the victim. And with this law, it, it's, it probably expounds its reach, not only to women, but also to men who you know, suffers sexual harassment in their workplace. Okay, so this one is a whole new law. Um, women can be perpetrators. Um, it's not only against men. It's not only against women. Um, let me just reiterate, this law is not against foreigners. And it was even, it wasn't, I don't think the, the government was even thinking of the foreigners when they passed this law. So um, this is applicable to everyone here in the Philippines. Correct, yes. It applies to every person living in the Philippines. Who is likely to be charged with an offense under this law? Like, for, for example, the guy on the street says, hey, baby, you're looking good, or the guy that keeps harassing the same person. So um, can you explain it to us? So under this provision, in it, it classifies um, three major acts and their respective penalties. So for the first kinds of acts, are those that involves cursing, wolf whistling, cat calling, leering and intrusive gazing, taunting, cursing, unwanted invitations, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist slurs, persistent unwanted comments on one's appearance, and among other sexual comments or sexual jokes that you tell to somebody in the street that has made an invasion to the person's personal space or threatens the person's sense of personal safety. The second classification of act that has a higher penalty would be acts such as making offensive body gesture, gestures at someone and exposing private parts for the sexual gratification of the perpetrator with the effect of demeaning, harassing, threatening, or intimidating the offended party, including clashing of private parts, public masturbation, groping, and similar lewd sexual actions. So it's more intense when you okay. do these kinds of acts. So the, the penalty is higher, 
And uh, under the acts that can be committed in the streets and public spaces, we have the third um, classification, which involves the acts of stalking. Any other acts that I've just mentioned, when accompanied by touching, pinching, and brushing against the body of the offended person, or any touching, pinching, or brushing against the genitalia, face, arms, anus, groin, breast, inner thighs, face, buttocks, or any part of the victim's body, even when accompanied, even when not accompanied by the two previous um, group of acts that I've mentioned earlier. So the penalty with in under this kind of um, act would be higher than the two classifications I've mentioned. I guess um, the reason why I uh, I ask it's because that most of my um, my viewers obviously they were traumatized of what's going on in the Western world with the Western feminism going on. It's just that I know this is very hard for you guys to uh, to understand or to believe that automatically they would think like oh there it is there's this law that Filipinas can use against us to extort money from us so please Gracie enlighten us and um again every, you can sue anybody right so but you have to prove it correct if it let's say oh oh hey hey you look nice can we go out for a dinner but let's say the Filipinas just like you are so creepy. Like, mm, can she just go to the police and then have this man arrested? Oh, definitely that cannot be done. It has to be, it has to go on a proper filing of case procedure before the prosecutor's office, which will take some time, of course. So the Filipina can only file for complaint for acts that he per she perceives to have been committed by her perpetrator and such acts should be um, those enumerated under the law. So if the Filipina files a case against the, the foreigner, it will take a couple of days and an effort to, for the Filipina to be contacting a lawyer, to, uh, to doing all the effort just to file a case. And if you look at the penalties imposed, it's very minimal. So, so I would offense for unwanted invitation because she's just you know okay, for, for that unwanted invitation for filipina to go through with the tedious process of filing cases and at the end of the day the penalty is just a thousand pesos or a uh, community service of 12 hours if if the perpetrator is found guilty of the crime charge beyond reasonable doubt right exactly so remember if you found guilty of the crime charge it should be beyond reasonable doubt so the filipina has to provide has to provide evidence beyond reasonable doubt to prove your conviction of the crime charge and also the money that that money that the you know the fine will not go to the filipina it will go to the court funds correct so she won't exactly gain. for for some um, offenses of some acts here that are punishable with fines these fines do not go to the filipina they go to the court funds and the filipina doesn't get anything from filing criminal cases nothing with respect to monetary awards to the filipina so no monetary awards so we cannot just abuse this law because we just want your money so gracie how can a woman prove that this person is harassing her or like she doesn't want the unwanted attention or um, he's creepy? I don't like I don't like him, but he's still insisting. How can she prove it? Um, she has to present evidence from her witnesses, like um, the circumstances when the act was allegedly committed, who were there at the time, who can testify for her, who saw the act or the things that um, been committed. Those are the things that she has to consider in pursuing a case uh, against the perpetrator for violation under this law. Before the, any case would go to court, it goes first to the prosecutor's office, and it's the prosecutor who hear the complaint, uh, hear the witnesses of the complainant, as well as the witnesses of the accused or the defense of the accused, and determines whether there is probable cause to file a case in court or to pursue the case in court. It's only when there is probable cause that 
the case goes to court and gets to be heard before a judge. Usually, you go to the police to help for the police to assist you in making the complaint, which complaint you file before the prosecutor's office. So that will filing a complaint or preparing for a complaint will take some time, and then filing it the prosecutor's office it also takes some time before the prosecutor hears it, and then another longer time before the prosecutor resolves the case if either it dismisses the case or it elevates the case to the court then that's gonna be another time as well so it's a long procedure it's a tedious procedure and i don't think um decent woman will, will just falsify his or her testimony just to incriminate someone and go through this tedious, proce tedious proceedings um i don't think that she will waste time for just pursuing something that at the end of the day it's not worth the the the, the time and the penalty is just so uh menial so i don't <laughs> and she doesn't get the 1000 pesos she doesn't even get the 1000 or 10000 no okay but let's say just for the for the sake of argument that this filipina doesn't want money from the guy she just wants to cause problems what can a guy do? I mean, it's Filipina against the foreigner. It's again, it's her word against the foreigner's word. But she still has to uh, prove everything that she's accusing against this guy. Yeah, of course. She has to prove her um, case through evidence that supports her accusations. On the other hand, the guy is presumed innocent. So, Gracie, let's talk about the fines for these offenses. What about the, um, the higher or the heavier fine? Okay, so, so the next category or the next uh, higher um, penalty would be acts such as making offensive body gestures at someone. Mm -hmm. Let's say you expose your genitalia, you masturbate in public, the penalty of which is 10,000 pesos and, of course, another community service of 12 hours. Oh, 10,000 Pesos is about around $200 and then 12 hours community service. Again, I want to reiterate, the person prosecuting you or uh, accusing you is not going to gain financially. So why would they go through something like this if it's not real? I know this might sound like a loaded gun to you all because from your experiences in your home country and what's going on right now, um, men are targeted in your country but here culturally um we don't we do the opposite we don't just uh, cry something that is not really true because we don't want to cause hia or embarrassment to ourselves and also to our family because um if we do something like this it's not only us it's the whole clan it's the hia it's the uh um I guess the saving face as well. We don't want to be causing uh, trouble. We don't want attention to ourselves, especially if it's false accusations for, especially for sexual harassment and stuff. Culturally, in as a whole, we don't do that. Just be respectful. And then, if this person is causing you trouble, then actually, this is not this is not just against men. As Gracie said, it's you can you guys can you know you can sue the. The Filipina as well for harassing you, right, Gracie? Yeah, if he, um, any victim of a crime that has been, um, you know, falsely accused against him or her, they can always have a recourse in the law, like for false accusation or malicious prosecution. They can file the case after the case has been dismissed, so they can file it against the one who filed the complaint first. And basically, I, I think that the, one of the main reasons why people would try to avoid getting into court proceedings is because the tedious process and the long process, a case wouldn't be finished in a year. So yeah. even how simple it is, let's say for this crime, if you're going to push through it, push through with this crime in court, it's, gonna, it's not going to be done within a year. And no Filipina or no decent person would go through this kind of uh, malicious accusation just to what at the end of the day just um even to get 1000 pesos or 2000 pesos to extort from the foreigner you know i i would i wouldn't think that would be something that the filipina is looking looking forward to
And yeah, and if you're not planning to harass anybody, why would you be even worried about it? I mean, again, if it really happened and if you are really, um, if you're really insisting and, you know, if the Filipino was really violated and I'm all for justice, but for false accusations, then what is, what is it for her? I mean, no financial gains. It's a tedious process and then just costing her attention. And if it, and it falls apart, then she's the one who's, you know, going to be in, you know, disgraced. So one redeeming quality of Filipinos is that we don't like attention being, you know, the spotlight. Do you like what? Do you like attention, Gracie? Oh, I don't like to be the center of attention or anything, so I prefer to be at the background. Okay, so this law has been in our books for the last three years. Have you heard of anyone being, you know, being accused of? Any of these violations? I have not come across of any case um, involving this law yet. So that's just my personal experience as a litigating lawyer. So in your opinion, do foreigners need to worry about this law? For me, not at all. As long as they continue to be nice and treat people nicely, they they have nothing to worry. And if ever they they would be, you know, they would want to introduce themselves with a Filipina in a coffee shop, um, I would presume that they would do it politely and mm-hmm. not something that's offensive, that even with people um watching them, it doesn't it doesn't look like that he, he is harassing the Filipina. So yeah. if you do it nicely, the Filipina will respond to you nicely as well. So you have nothing to worry of being, you know be charged of unwanted um, invitation. And I, I think I think uh, most most of the time, I'm not saying that foreign foreign guys are perfect. Um, if they were, if the lady would say no, they they would, you know, they would back off. It's it's like don't be persistent if you know that the girl is not, you know, interested. Don't be afraid. Just say hello and just don't be a douche, and then everything's gonna be fine. You know, you go to the beach and obviously most of the time beaches have sharks. But does that mean you don't want to go to the beach at all? So if that shark won't bite you for like three years and then you just, oh, I just don't want to go there because there's a shark there. But come on, guys, be just just use your common sense. So guys, I know that this law has been on the books for three years and as the saying goes, the proof is in the pudding. So maybe... Next three years, we're going to check out with Gracie again um, to see if there's a blow up of cases of cat calling and stuff. But I guarantee or in my personal opinion, I don't think that's going to happen. And let time prove me right. That's my prediction. How about you, Gracie? Any last remarks? I think the, I, I totally agree with you, please. Probably will have to check this out again after three years and see how many gets filed for violation under this law. So anyway, just um, just be just be polite and say hello. I don't think you're gonna go to jail just by saying hello. I think they're just doing this nonsense just to scare you guys, like fear mongering. I think you guys are smarter than that. Okay, so anyway, guys, if you need any legal advice, Grace is here to uh, uh, to assist you. I'm going to leave her contact info. The best way to contact you, Gracie, is via email. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, just uh, they can shoot me an email and hopefully they just wait until I have the time to respond to the email. So anyway, Gracie, thank you so much for your time and for enlightening us about this law. And for you guys out there, maybe you have legal questions that you want me to ask Gracie. We can compile them and then we can discuss that next time. Perfect. That works for me. All righty. Well, see you again, Gracie. Bye, everyone. Bye, Pia. Bye, everyone. Now, I'm not a fan of any legislation that tells people what they can and cannot say. I'm a proponent of free speech, and I don't want the government regulating people's behavior unless it's absolutely necessary. The whole concept of safe spaces makes my skin crawl because it treats people like babies who can't handle life's little annoyances and challenges. I understand that people shouldn't threaten other people or grab their private parts, but we already have laws to cover those cases. What I'm concerned about is, 
who gets to decide the definition of unwanted advance or intrusive gazing? When people think they need protection from gazing, we've gone off the rails, folks. For that reason, I would not have supported this legislation. But anyone who suggests that it's the end of foreigner-Filipino relations is just trying to scare you and maybe get views on their YouTube channel. But I'd rather give you the truth, and I think time will prove me right. With over 130,000 foreigners currently here in the Philippines and more arriving every day as travel restrictions ease, if this law has any real effect on your interactions with Filipinas, we can expect to see hundreds, if not thousands, of cases ending up in court. And I just don't think that's going to happen. In fact, I'm so confident this law isn't going to be a big deal that I hereby offer to pay the 1,000 peso fee to the first subscriber who gets convicted of unwanted advances or catcalling. And as far as breaking the more serious parts of the law, like outdoor masturbation, that's different. If you're stupid enough to pull a karate kid in public, you know, wax on, wax off, then you deserve to end up in jail. Well, that's it for today. And I'll be back on Tuesday, as always. Till then, folks. If you think about it, I'm kind of like a doctor with my finger on the pulse of the Philippines. I can help to vaccinate you against all the problems you may encounter when visiting here with an injection of information and humor. If you appreciate my services, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell for your next dose of Dr. P. Consider becoming a patron, where you'll not only be supporting my channel, but you'll receive exclusive videos and features. Now, what seems to be the problem? I got a stiff joint. A stiff joint? All right, let's have a look. Oh my, you sure do. I think I better keep you here overnight for observation. And I got a great bedside manner.